around the we can start around the 20th verse okay all right Exodus 18 now again for those of you that heard this um, on Sunday don't worry I'm going to fill in a lot more tonight because at least I could give you some more scriptures than I did on Sunday I kind of rushed because I didn't know the time constraints and I really thought I was only going to be up here for 15 minutes and didn't realize no it wasn't and so we kind of went off of script and that was uh, that just turned into us just talking okay and I realized something more and more that being in this position um, you start to see the, these major themes amongst people. And it is um, trust, and it's also forgiveness. Tr trust and forgiveness, not necessarily love. Trust and forgiveness are these two veins of where um, you can see is broken or someone's been hurt, right? And, um, and you're trying to reestablish that community of trust, right? Um, and that, that line or fabric that's essential to every environment, you can see along this line, um, trust has been something and forgiveness is something, okay? And you'll recognize they go hand in hand. Because somebody that breaks your trust needs forgiveness. But if I can't forgive, you can never reestablish that trust. So it's the cycle that keeps, all right? All right. So um, as you read this before, uh, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, uh, sees that uh, Moses is judging the people, right? That he is standing as judge over the people's d disputes. Wherever there's people, there's going to be disputes, right? And at one time where they didn't trust him at all, they was like, who made you, who made you rule over us? Now they want him to be able to judge fairly uh, their disputes, all right? So let's, let's look at from, let's look at verse 20. Oh, you know what? Let's look at uh, verse 17. I think that's what we did from Sunday. Um, actually, you know what? Let's do from 12. Then Jethro, Mos Jeth then Jethro Moses' uh, father-in-law uh, brought out a burnt offering and other sacrifices to God and Aaron. Uh, came with the, uh, all the elders of Israel to eat a meal with Moses' um, father-in-law in the presence of God. The next day, Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people, and they stood around him. Look at the time period. From when? Morning From morning to evening. So that's letting you know this was a full-day process, right? right? When his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, what is this that you're doing to the people? Right? So what are you doing to these people? They're waiting all day for you. Why do you alone sit as judge while these people stand around from morning to evening? Right? Moses answered and said, because the people can come to, come to me to seek God's will whenever they have a dispute. It is brought to me, and I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and instruction. Moses' father-in-law replied, what, are you, what you are doing is not good. That's good. It's good to have a good father-in-law. Uh, you, and, you, and you and these people who come to you will only wheel yourself out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. Listen now to me, and I will give you some advice. And may God be with you. You must, you must be the people's representative before God and bring their disputes, on, disputes to him. Verse 20. Uh, teach, them, teach them, the people that you select, teach them his decree 
decrees and instructions and show them the way they are to live and how they are to behave. But select capable men from the people, men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain, and appoint them as officials over the thousands, the hundreds, the fifties, the ten, and have them serve as judges for the people at all times. But have them bring every difficult case, the tougher ones, um, to you. The simple cases, let them handle themselves. That will make your load lighter because they will share, they will share with you. And if you do this, God, if you do this and God so commands, you'll be able to stand the strain and all these people will go home satisfied. Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. He chose capable men from all Israel and made them leaders of the people, officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, tens. They serve as judges for the people at all times. The difficult cases they brought to Moses, but the simple ones they decided for themselves. Then Moses sent his father-in-law in on his way, and Jethro returned to his own country. All right? All right. So on Sunday, I did tell you um, that there are the... Uh, qualities of people we can't trust, right? And so when we're looking for qualities of people we can't trust, especially if you're going to establish any kind of friendship, any type of relationships, you want them to have these qualities, right? So what the Bible is doing, since, since he doesn't tell you directly, like, trust people, he, he, you look at what God does and how he selects, and you do that same thing. What, how God does it, how, how God selects people, you want to select in the same manner. Does that make sense? All right. Um, now, what I should have said that I didn't say sun, Sunday, that sometimes even with this selection, there's no guarantee that any person will remain as trustworthy right, in each and every instance of life. Right? That no matter what the qualifications sometimes, because they, they can show all of this and still. Right? Um, and still end up turning their back on you. Amen? Amen. So you, you don't blame yourself, because oftentimes we blame ourselves when people turn and we take it personal. Right? So I, I want to make sure that I said that. Okay. But one thing that you do learn from this is that for those of you that says, I can't trust anybody, the Bible shows you, it says, search within the group. There are people in there. So let's pause right there. For those people that says, ain't nobody worth my trust. The Bible is showing us, he said, Search amongst the people. There are people there. So what God is trying to say, search for those who say, I can't trust, because you have that group, and say, I can't trust nobody. And be careful because that, we're going to talk about that. That's the plan of the enemy too. The plan of the enemy too is for you to be so isolated and so paranoid that you handle things by yourself, and doing that by yourself only causes you deeper problems. So let's just hold that one for a second there. He says, search within the group, there's people there. So what God is trying to say, I know you may think that everybody is terrible, but there are people in the group. That's a good thing, right? Amen. Amen. So there are people amongst us that we can trust. Amen? Amen? But the second thing he says is that you have to search. I think I don't want, I don't want, I, I, I guess I, I kind of brushed over it on Sunday, um, but I'm going to make it more direct tonight, that you have to search. It's not something you can just roll into. It has to be something intentional. With its, he says, search. You have to go on a mission to find people you can trust. 
because it's hard to find. If he wanted anybody to be judged, he said, choose any all these judges. No, what he says, search amongst the people because let's tell the truth. This is church and we love it, but there are people in here we can't trust. Amen. They're among our people. We just can't get them to trust like that. But they're here. But you have to search. I see your face. With your face is, that face is no, saying something? Oh. I'm I'm like drawn in. Oh, because your face is like, so I thought you wanted to say. No, I just wanted they're to here. God is saying that you have people in your life you can't trust. You got a lot of people. Because someone says, we got nobody. They're there, but you have to search. I, I think friendship, relationship, is not something that we can say, you know, wherever the wind blows, wherever the wind blows, it's going to happen. No, there has to be certain specific qualities you're looking for beforehand. That the plan is I have it in my head what it is, right? And in this search, you have to look. This is, this is, this ain't nothing, this ain't about being reckless. Because some of our, our, our trust sometimes is, is, is reckless. We just throw it out there. And, and wherever, it, wherever it goes, we can have it. No, you, you have to search for real. All right? Um, look at Proverbs Two verse four. That that word search there is to quest, hotly pursue, to scour, to search intensely. Proverbs two verse four. I'm on the pen. If you look for it, and if you look for, for it, silver, and, and search for, for silver, and search for hidden treasure, for hidden treasure, mm -hmm. for hidden treasure. That as you have to look that for it like a treasure that is like hidden. A treasure that is hidden. Proverbs two verse four. Proverbs two verse four. Good friendships, good, good people friendships, are hidden treasures. Good people are hidden treasures. They are. They are. Good friendships, good people, good friendships, are hidden treasures. Good people are hidden treasures. You only can find them by searching. You only can find them by searching. Good people, good people, good, people, good friendships, good, people, good relationships, good relationships, good relationships, good relationships as well. To, to, make well. a good relationship to, good to make a good relationship requires good requires active work. Requires active to dig work. through some mess. To dig through some mess. Right? The point is, right? is that it has the to be something is, is that, that you are actively that pursuing. You are active this is a quest. Pursuing. This is a quest. You know, this is a quest. You ever see, this is a treasure hunt. This is a quest. You ever seen? Is this a treasure hunt? You, you ever seen one of those shows where you, you ever seen um, shows it's uh, it's where, a treasure hunt um, and it's, it's a map? Uh, it's a treasure hunt and, and then they, they search all around the world. They, they, they go searching with the map the world. because at the end of it map. is wealth. Because so they're like, if I'm going to give you a city of like gold and whatnot, so you take this map and they're searching all around the winds, do storms because at the end, if they find it, it's going to make them rich. That's relationships too. At the end of it, it's going to make you richer. Now, maybe not with money, but with, in your freedom of your mind and, the, and, and, and your conscience. Because bad relationships make you broke. Amen. Let me just say that. Amen. Amen. Bad relationships will cause you to be mentally bankrupt. Your joy sapped. They take more than they give. Amen. Right? Way more than they give. And you're like, boy, oh boy. <laughs> but sometimes, but the, 
But when you make that investment, yeah. hard, hard, man. It's very hard. And even when you do, right? And sometimes we could be the people that turn, but it's this quest. It's something that you, um, it's something that you have to search for. Now, here's the thing what God also is saying. God is saying that you have the capability, Moses, to find them. Right? He says to Moses, you search. So that made me say automatically that it's not something that, able, that Moses wasn't capable of doing. You are capable of finding somebody you can trust. Yes. Yes. No, if he wasn't able to do it, if he wasn't capable, God would have selected for him. If he wasn't capable of doing it, he would have said, you see, there you go a person. Pick this. Pick this guy, Moses. There you go in the corner. Get him. He didn't. He said, search. Just like he did with the tabernacle. Search. I give. It's there. It's there. It's there. Now, what it is now, now, here's the thing. It's there, but oftentimes, what we're looking for. That the same thing we say we don't trust with people because they're broken, they're malicious, they're unjust, is the same thing or the same kind of way that we find people through our brokenness. And you got to be careful because if you're searching through your brokenness, you're just going to find something that supplies or adds to that need right now. Yes. It can make you desperate yeah. to pick the wrong one. And you can be picking out of the desperation you're in. And then you find out later on when you get hold, Jesus. What was I thinking? Right? Do, do you remember Esau and his birthright? Why he sold it? Because he was hungry. He made a select a bad choice. Out of so sometimes you are so hungry to choose people. That's because you're hungry. And in your right mind, you will never choose them. Now, I want you to do a second. One second. Right now, think about the people in when you're anger and you angry, like you go to sometimes. People that you select when you're angry. Because sometimes it, you only go into them because they soothe in a need for you right then. And they don't really provide for you. Right? The level of tensions. Guys do it all the time. Women do it all the time. We're not getting attention in one year. We go find it somewhere else. One of the things when you do when you get laid off from a job or something, or you, you I don't, don't, you don't want to hurry up because you're just going to make the bills make your selection, and you can end up taking something that's far below your worth. Same thing with people. Same because you're desperate and you need attention, you get something far below your worth, and then when you come to yourself. Prodigal son, when you come to yourself, prodigal son, when you come to your senses, you're in a pig's pen, and you say, man, home was so much better. So but, but, what, what God wanted Moses to know, that he possessed the ability. That's what I want you to know. You possess the ability. Yes, God, I hear you. <laughs> All right. All right. So um, 
the first thing I, I, I guess I did on Sunday, I did fear, trustworthiness, and don't take bribes. But I, um, the selection that I didn't tell you was capable, right? He says, find men, find people that are capable. Capable. Now, you're capable, so you got to find people ca capable. You got to find people with the capacity to handle your trust. Some people don't, you know, capacity is, capacity is the, 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 uh, the, the space. Okay, if I don't have a cup, but if a cup has capacity, 12 ounce, 10 ounce, that's all the capacity that it has. Right? You want a person with the capacity to handle the level of trust that you have. Because if they can't handle the level of trust, then the stuff that you give them, guess what's going to do? Spill out. Some of us have a whole bunch of things in our life. Our histories have a whole bunch of things. Not even some of us, all of us. Let me just say that. Let me not exclude anyone from in here. Everyone in here has a past and a future that they have things that it's littered with. And there's some people that just can't handle it. They can't handle it. And your information plus their information, they're going to pop at the scene. And next thing you know, all of your business. Wait, 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 hold on. Nigga, parts of me, look at parts of me right here, and parts of me over there. Didn't I tell you that last week? How you got it? I'm, I'm being honest. I mean, I'm making it, I'm illustrating it, but that's what it is. That I, you can't handle it. So overflow, and so their, their mouth don't have their mouth don't have the strength to close it. You don't have a lock on it. They be like, oh, I can't hold it anymore. You know, you ever somebody feel like a, a puffer fish? Okay, I can't. And so parts of your life, parts of your life, is all over, and sometimes you go around picking it up. Wait, hold on, and you got to pick up. The pieces of your life. Yeah, you remember Samson? And when you, you, you trust your weaknesses with the wrong people, they come back and cut your hair. Because he trusted someone in his desperate, lonely moment, laid between her legs, and he gave his weakness, and somebody used it against him against him and cut his hair. Now he's thinking that he's still able to fight. He goes out to fight the Philistines not realizing, I already snipped you. And all your strength gone. That's what when you take people's information and give it to, it cuts you. It snipped your strength. Hmm? It does. Because what they're doing is, is taking power away from you, placing it. Because remember, you, now you arm somebody with, with strength using your weakness. What friendships is, I'm, once I'm talking to you, uh, Sister Lorna, and I'm telling you my weakness, you become stronger. And if I could trust you, you won't use it against me. Because I'm becoming weak and vulnerable before you. Which, if you trust, when somebody starts telling you their business, you will become stronger. Because now you have something. You have information about their weakness. I'm making you strong with it. The last thing you want to do is the same strength I gave to you cut me down and make me weak. You don't do that. You don't do that. Because the fact that I told you was that I trust you with my weakness. And now you're using it against me. So, which brings us to why I said 
the first thing, the quality is that person has to fear God. The number one thing that Moses, what God told Moses is not, okay, yes, they have to be cap capable because they have to have the capacity. There's a lot of things that are going on, but they better fear God. Most of all our problems that we have, Sister Chanel, is that we don't fear God. And that's Romans, when you do Romans, all Romans 3. And you can read that at home. I did tell you that. Romans 3, verse 18, Exodus 1, 7, um, Exodus, Genesis 42, 18. And this fear, um, when the Bible says fear, it's not talking about being scared. It's talking about an active respect, a reverence. All right? The whole of Romans. The whole of Romans um, is basically is saying that uh, our chief sin is that we have no fear of God at all. When people don't fear God at all, they are allowing themselves to do things. All right? When you fear God, the focus is awe and respect for the majesty of God. Right? Fearing God is this it's not a casual relationship with the Father. Although we can come to him casually and he can, he says call you Abba Father, but he's but still although he's telling you to come as any casual relationship, there has to be a level of respect. Right? When you fear God, it's still intimate and personal. With you so far? And the more you walk with God, he's, he be, becomes a threat to your ego. He's going to challenge and tear down. The biggest threat to you is you. Your ego. Because all of us have self-delusions of our own worth. Does that make sense? We think we more, we think we better, we think we hotter. And we look at him here, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the you are? Now, why that person is somebody you can't trust? Because if that person doesn't have a healthy view of themselves, You see that now, why you need to fear God? Because if they don't have God humble in them, you can't trust them. Who's their judge? Who tells them don't do that? Not God, because they don't care. Yeah, right. You, you th right, you can, you take God's business people's business, and you do whatever you want because there's no fear there. No fear upon, no fear of, not even necessarily even punishment, but just the respect of God. You do whatever you want and you treat, treat God's children however you want. If they don't fear God, they don't see God in you. Yeah, you can't see God. You don't fear God. So you treat God's children as nothing. When I fear God, I see everyone, every last one of us in here is I see God. Every last one of us in here. I don't care where you come from. If you're here or outside, when I see people on the street, you are, that's God. And when I fear God, I respect his creation. I respect the business of their creation, and I don't care how bad you think it is or how terrible you think you are. They deserve amount of respect. Yes, and anyone that don't fear God will disrespect you. Because if they don't have respect for God, you can't trust that. You can't trust that. 
Any relationship that you start, you begin, you got to make sure you have a healthy respect for God. Because who sets your standards? Who? Where do, where do you refer to? What's your reference point? Right? Meaning, who do you look to for information and guidance if it's not God? You? And your broken, corrupt, selfish, and all those other things? So you're looking to your brokenness to deal with me? If they slander God, they're going to slander you. And here's the thing. If they slander you, they're slandering God. One and the same. So don't tell me you respect for God and treat people right there. Don't tell me. Don't tell me you fear God. Don't tell me. That's why he says, how can you fear somebody you don't see and can't respect the people that you do see? Right? Don't. That's, so, that's why you don't. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You don't fear, if you don't fear God, Right? All right. So we did say fear, fear. We did say trustworthy. Remember, I said trustworthy is the firm. I'm not, just to review, trustworthy is the firmness and the consistency with truth. The firmness. I don't want someone flirtatious with the truth. Meaning you tickle it every now and again. But, but, but it, you never have it for real. You know, people can stretch truth. They stretch it and they can make it fit whatever, uh, whatever you want. White lies, blue lies, yellow lies, pink ones. Is 50% true? You heard the saying, 50% truth is a whole lie. Fifty percent truth is a hundred percent lie. Okay? Fifty percent truth is a hundred percent lie. Why? Because truth is durable. All right? And I think that's what we said on Sunday is that this person must be able to stand in the truth so you can depend on them. My dependency is that you remain consistent with your words. That's what I'm depending. That's, all, that's where character begins. I mean, character is also fear God, but also your character is I got to be able to trust you. Right? I got to know. I, I have to know um, that you would remain consistent in doing what's right. All right? Look, look at, let's look at, for a second, let's look at uh, um, Exodus 1, um, and, and you, it's around the 20 something verses. You remember the midwives? The midwives of, of, of that was in Egypt that were, um, Pharaoh gave the decree to kill the, the baby boys, right? Um, and they couldn't do it because they knew that this is wrong to do, right? Although they were ordered to do it. Now, obviously, after a few years, if they told them to kill the sons, Pharaoh sees after maybe a year that there's still little boys running around. He calls them into the midwives into uh, his, to tell them, like, what's going on, these kids? And they use the excuse, well, the Hebrew women, 
they, they, they push babies out of their room so quickly that by the time we get in there to help them push, the baby is already out. And, you know, they're not going to kill it or abort it while it's, you know, in the womb. Or they, just, they ain't going to do it. The reason why that's important is they fear God, but even though they were ordered to do something wrong, they stood firm in their convictions and says, I can't do this because it's wrong. I'm willing to be courageous enough to even face death to do what's right rather than to live and do what's wrong. The reason why that's important to you, that you got to have somebody like that that's dependable, you got to trust whoever it is that I'm going to do what's right, not based on the crowd or not based on the pressure. Because sometimes we got to do things and we may not find friendship over there. It may not be popular. Does that make sense? Sometimes what, what, what you need is sometimes like that you can trust somebody where you have to, if your son did something or your mother did something or your cousin did something, I'll trust you when I know that you correct your own child. When you drape them up and you drape them up and say, you've been terrible at that. I could trust you because I know you didn't care who it was. That you're willing to confront an issue because the issue is the issue and they don't care about people. Does that make sense? Yes. You, need a, you need people you can trust like that. Yes. That their, their way that they deal with you is not based on popularity, but they're cor courageous enough to stand for what's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Stand for what's right. Not with what you feel, not what you think. Stand for whatever is right. And let the chips fall where they may, but this is what's right. Even if you are the only one that believe it, what's right? Do the right thing. That's what we're talking about with King Asa. He, he, I'm going to do what's right and good in the sight of God. That's what I'm going to do. And whatever people get upset about it, that's all right. That's somebody you can trust because that person is answering to a higher authority. That person won't be moody. And that person won't change week by week, day by day. I will call out whoever I need to call out. That's a person you could trust. Absolutely. What? Yeah, you see your face like you can't. You, you, you. I can't say a word. Huh? We'll be here all night. You'll be here a night. Yeah, if my friends don't make it. I'm just think. I'll write my question down. Okay. <laughs> because I look at your face and your facial expressions. It's like asking questions. Yeah. So, so. Okay. But do you understand what I'm saying? That's important to have because that's the type of person that's going to tell you the truth. He's going to tell you the truth. All right? And you can depend on him and, or her. And, the, and you know what you're going to get when you're around them. Ain't nothing like consistency. I'm going to tell you, it, the older I get, You need consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nothing like it. Yeah. Now, again, they, we're dealing with human beings. And so every other day, you may not get that person to be consistent. They're going to be. But that's not the norm. You, you, you put in a little, you know, every now and again, you have a, a rainy day with your emotions. <laughs> Our emotions. You know, men, we are, men are emotional. That was going to be my question. Oh, yeah, we are. Oh, yes, we well, are. Not about oh. Men, but oh. I mean, what you were saying that as human beings. Yes. We, we, we go through moments. We get, we get moods. I, I, again, I, I remember, I, 
when I was just deep, deep into the mix, like, and they lost, oh, I'm turning off the lights. Don't talk to me. <laughs> don't. Don't talk to me. Do not. Finish your day. Do not talk to me. And I know I must have been moody. My wife probably didn't tell me, but I know she probably like, you are straight a jerk. And you know when you're not in a good mood, you you arguing at it, you barking at anything. This <laughs> moody. But you understand the cause. So already in her head, she probably know it's the Knicks. You have to tell them. But when you don't have anything to point to, like, what you so mad at? Wait, in the Knicks ain't on. <laughs> What's wrong with you today? That's somebody you got to wake up and you be like, I right, don't let me tiptoe. You, you, you good today? No. Again? Oh, man, forget it. You know how, how, how nerve-wracking that is? And that's why I said on Sunday, that's why we love God, because he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I wake up and I, but, well, the Greek gods, that's what the Greek gods, you didn't know what mood God was in because he may just kill you today. That was with the Greek gods. You didn't know. You wake up and you're like, I don't know what kind of mood he's in today. He may kill me. So there's that fear that he may just kill you. That's right, God. <laughs> God is always sending me alerts. Right? You, you, you don't know. Consistency, knowing what to expect day in, day out, that's not boring. Now, may, may, many of us don't want our jobs to be like that, right? But I want people that's consistent, that I know what to expect. Fine. They're, again, sometimes we, our moods go on vacations without us. <laughs> However... Imagine having a friend that you can pick up the phone and call and say, yo, I'm going through. And you know you have a rock. Imagine the comfort you know there's somebody on your phone that you know that person, he or she is going to be sound. And it's grounded. You know how comforting that is? You're not going to hear it back. Hold, hold on. They're capable of handling your mess. They won't use it against you. They fear God, and they're dependable. See, now we create a relationship. Look at that. You can get sound advice, and you know if they're wrong, they can say, I'm so wrong about that. I gave you the wrong advice, and don't look at you. That's all you. That's your fault. You stupid. And they change because they, they're offering your advice depending on the group. Because the information, like just say you and Sister Lorna might be in the same uh, situation. Because I don't really like her that much, I'll change the advice based on the person. Quit. You should quit your job. And I tell you, you should keep it. And you're going to do the same thing. So what made you? Because some people love accidents. They love accidents and they love crime scenes and they love to giggle away as your life rides off a cliff knowing that and then they say, oh my God, what happened to you? Your advice? You didn't have to take it. You didn't have to give it. And one thing when you're in a bad mood or in a very wobbly place, the wrong advice tip you over the edge. I wish I, uh, seriously. You got, when you're shaky, and you got to be honest with yourself that I'm in very shaky, that one little, and then they tiptoe around it, and they drive by and slow down, like, look at that. Come on, come on, take a look, take a look, take a look. I didn't even know it was happening. I didn't know. You didn't know? So, <laughs> why are you laughing, Sister Lona? You're making me... 
Well, what I'm, what I'm, what's happening is you in your mind, you're pulling together all the crime scenes that people use your information with sometimes that you trusted the wrong people and you see it or you've seen it happen. You heard it happen. And then now, sometimes, when it's happening to you, it's a very uncomfortable situation to be in. Everyone has in here heard someone's talking about somebody's life that's on a cliff. Right? You've heard, you know, sister something's so son. Whew, he's in jail again, you know. He's in jail again. What do you do now? The same old things. <laughs> Can't change. Not, not change him. He need God, you know. He need God. He might drink, he might smoke. Boy, I don't know. Can't change. Not, not change him. Not, not change him. Me pray, me pray, me pray, me pray. But even jail now. Because the... And they say it softly, but the intention is, it's like, look at the business. Look at the business in the street. It becomes a crime scene where it becomes dialogue of somebody's life. This, this ain't a joke. And to live the world, it ain't a joke. This is somebody's life here. Somebody's life. Hanging on by a thread that you're taking as something that you can just throw around like a football. People. People, people. Okay. But I'll give you that because they're, they're Christians. I'll give you that. No fear, God. So, Pastor, I know you, you've been talking about truth. So, if we could only, like, if Sister X went to Sister Y and said something, and then if Sister X said, you know what? I can't hold water. Don't tell me anything. But we're not truthful like that. Yeah, that's what I'm trying yes. to say. If we could all become... You, you know what I've learned? I, I've learned... I've learned, like, if, if it's your business and you tell me, I'm, I'm cool. If it's not your business and it's somebody else, don't tell me. I'm out. If it's yours, you won't tell me about yours because it's, once it's here, it's here. Because I know already, if, if I, I... Well, if I don't hold it, God gonna get me. But if it's not your business and you come to me and say, well, you know, this, sorry, you got the wrong guy. You got the wrong guy. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. Because that to me, again, it's gossip. Did they authorize you to tell me? Do they know that you're telling me? Would they like that you're telling me? And if they don't, because why are they sending you? Right? And that's what some people do. They do it. They're like, yeah, because, again, they're not, I'm not going to say they're reveling in and being happy, but they enjoy. I enjoy somebody's life being worse than mine. And although I don't have a life, at least it's not like that. My life ain't as bad as that one. Right? If you can't, here's the thing. If, if, you, if you're not excelling, right, if your life is not excelling, then you get, in some, you get comfort in somebody's life being weaker. And that doesn't make your life strong because somebody else is weak. All right? All gossip is bad. Right? That's why I said gossip is the conversation of cowards. That's what gossip is. Gossip is the conversation of cowards because you can't hear publicly, nor can you confront. So you talk behind the scenes. If you was, if you was bold and courageous enough, you won't need anybody to talk to. I'll come straight around your road, right to you, like, hey. I don't like you. Stop talking. But we do, we, we talk in the back rooms. All right. 
That's more time than I, I didn't expect to stay. Stay on that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And this is what I'm saying, the levels of trust that you're looking for for people. This is what, what God is trying to, they got to fear God. And they got to be dependable. You got to be able to count on them. They got to be solid. They have to be consistent. Trustworthiness. All right? I did say I'm, I was going to stop at 9.35, only because you're going to be back here on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. That's uh, the youth anniversary. So they have service, right? Youth anniversary on... On Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. Okay. So, oh, okay. Exodus. God is all over the place tonight. He's just talking, talking in ringtones, and he's. <laughs> okay. So, what what you don't want to do, you don't want to be people that don't trust. Right. Um, you, but we we do. I, I believe we do want to cultivate cultivate environments of trust, right? But I don't want you to believe that you can't trust anyone because what the enemy will want you to do is believe that you can't trust anyone and so now you are carrying the weight. What you see with, with Moses before his father gave him advice was that I was taking on all the weight. I was bearing, I was judging everyone and not only was it slowing down the people's life, but it also slowing down your life. Yeah. Some of us, we are carrying a lot of stuff because we, maybe we've been burned and we can't find anyone or we believe there's no one that we can give to. So we're heavy with the weight of I can't trust. Because everywhere you look, Right? You probably say, I can't put it there, can't put it there, can't put it there. You, have you ever had something where you, too many bags in your hand? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. From the grocery. From the grocery. Okay, let's say from the grocery. And you don't have a wagon. <laughs> but let's say you don't have any bags. You just have your grocery, you're shopping with just your arms. Right? Now, the more things you pick up, you're still holding other stuff in your hand. So guess what? Sometimes when I told you you got to be able to trust somebody be, and they, with capacity because you could give it to them and your, your life is spilling all over the place, sometimes you do it too by yourself. Yeah. And you drop pieces of yourself over there too. You drop pieces of yourself over there. Does that make sense? You tell on yourself. You can tell on yourself. Okay. You do. Or you lose grasp of other things. Like, because you can't trust anyone while you're at work, you can't concentrate on work because you're still grappling with the things that you're trying to work out in your mind about what's going on because you have nobody to talk to. Does that make sense? And so you lose time at work because areas over here has arrested you, and so you can't focus here. Absolutely. Counseling. Counseling, absolutely. Absolutely. Right? And it happens. Some of us have. We, we, on the train, we are trying to work out things about what's going on in our life. Because one of the things, when you're going through something, it, it, it arrests your brain from thinking about anything else. And parts of you are like, oh, my God. Oh, I didn't even, I didn't, oh my God, I didn't send out the report. You get home, right? And now you still. Ever happen to anybody here? And time is just gone. Where time went? Just leaked away. Right. Now, time waits for no man, and then imagine handling things in areas that you can't, where problems, stress, 
right? Imagine all of that. Now time is really. And not only are it time, but now you're aging too. Yes. Stress would age you. Real quick. Right? And you're not comfortable. Let's just tell the truth. When you can't trust, you ain't comfortable. There's no place that you find comfort. None whatsoever. You ain't sleeping. You ain't eating. You ain't drinking. You ain't... Right? And maybe you'll find a little escape here in church every now and then you get lost in worship. But you know, soon as you, the benediction and you step outside, here it is again, slap you right in your face. Especially when you've been hurt. Especially when you've placed your trust in someone and they hurt you. All right? All right. We're doing the same thing like we did Sunday. All of a sudden, we can just keep talking. We got to go home. You don't have to. What is that? We say, D. Well, you don't have to stay here. You don't have to go home. But, right? You don't have to go home, but you got to. Absolutely. Oh. You heard what you said, uh, Landis? Absolutely. To say something. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right. I did say that Sunday. You do. You do box yourself in. It takes you a long time to recover from betrayal. And it makes you paranoid. Paranoia is one of those things that, I mean, speaking, you don't know. You don't know who know. She know? He know? <laughs> right. Some comfortable place to be in. And which is why I said um um all tra all truth needs trans uh transparency need a place it can where it can hide and trust. If you want me to be transparent, it has to be an environment that we can trust. Can you handle this nakedness? But you have to set up the ground rules. Absolutely. So Boundaries are next, what we're talking about. We have to, every relationship, trustworthy, has to be one with boundaries. And after we talk, we're going to talk about the boundaries of trust. So, Master, yes. are you? Doing what? Am I doing this a trust? You are having this Bible study mm -hmm. because you're leading the church in this. Absolutely. Yes. 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 That's what Absolutely. We are creating an atmosphere in church where we can be trust. We can because that that is the last aspect of this church yes. we need to work on. Yes. Trust. trust. Yes. Got worship. How's our worship? How's a word? You better, you better put two, two thumbs up. <laughs> no, how's the word? How's the word, period? All right. How's, how's worship? Uh, love ain't, I don't worry about love. Uh, because we will have it. You know, we will have it. Now, there's different aspects of love, but fellowship, but, part, but the bulk of fellowship is trust. That is the last brick in this wall that we need to we need to perfect. And I don't know if we can make it perfect, but at least build it. I'm not saying talk to everybody every single day, because none of some of us here we, we see it. Somebody should tell you, I don't trust you, so I don't want you to talk to me. You, well, well, here's the thing. I, yeah, people do do that. But you don't even have to say it to feel it. I can feel this the place don't trust. You don't have to say it. Absolutely. You don't have to say it not to trust it. Okay, so we, we could talk. Um, this is one of the areas when I was saying with, especially when it came to washing feet, right? And, and not that um, I'm symbolic in any way, 
but there is the letter of the law, the letter, and there's the spirit. The spirit is why we do something, right? The Bible is the letter of it, and then there's the spirit of what it means. Washing, washing of feet is Jesus in his authority disrobing. Disrobing, he rises from supper. Disrobes, takes off his, his kingship, his authority, humbles himself to someone's lower, fellowships by washing their dirt, wraps them in a towel, it's his covering, and to establish fellowship. The servitude of authority, stepping down, taking off their power, being naked and exposing himself. Yes. Stripped. He rises from stuff. It lays aside his garment, right? Meaning stripped. I'm naked. Kneels down. Takes your dirt. Wraps it. Cleans it in servitude. Now, think of what I'm saying with that. And think about where we are as a church. Are we rising from supper? Taking off our authority. Seeing somebody's dirt. Wrapping it and cleaning it. And become fellowship with one another. Make sense? That's what I'm after. Not just the act. The spirit of something. The spirit of fellowship of I'm covering you and I'm willing to be naked too but clean your dirt. In my head I said what we, we do we do we, you know we doing we having a foot massage. It's a foot massage. Because if we don't mean what we are doing we just doing. Might as well just get me Mailing or somebody and just go, what color you want? <laughs> and get a pedicure. That's what you're getting. Get a pedicure. We're getting a foot massage. The, when God did these things, he says, do that in remembrance of me. I want to remember. I'm not just doing this for you to show of it. I'm doing it because it's real. You don't want me to tell you I love you just for loving you. You want me to show you that I mean it. All my words don't mean anything after a while. And guess what I do? I take it for granted and it loses its authenticity. The more we do it and we don't mean it, it loses its authenticity. It becomes just tradition. Does that make sense? And so now when we do it, you feel that there is a connection going on. And sometimes we don't understand what something is until it's gone. Does that make sense? You don't understand what it is until you, when, when the love of something, when it's missing, then you say, now I understand, I missed it. It was intentional. I didn't do it for time. We stay around and we stick around all the time for time. Do it for time. There's always a method to, yeah, I think I'm mad or it might be crazy. There's a method. I'm not trying to break away from tradition. I'm not trying to break away from what we didn't do. I said the easiest thing for me to do was to carry on, to keep everything that was established. You want me to be an easy pastor? The easiest thing for me to do was just to do everything that we did before, preach and go home. I could easy. I could have done that easy. I didn't have to mess with anything. I didn't change anything. I could have just, anything that you pastor, overseer said, do it, I could, my job would be easy. Think about it. But I'm taking the harder route because there's something more to it than me. You understand? You can go in any job and for your paycheck and don't have to change anything. You don't care about it. I used to say GTC. GTC for me when it's at work was get the check. That meant I didn't care, just get the check and out of it. I didn't care anything about the workers. I didn't care anything about things. I'm going to do my work, GTC. Me and my friends used to remind each other all the time. She used to say GTC, and I tell them the same thing, GTC. Get the check and go home. 
get the pay and go home. But the people that care is more than a check. This is to me more than a check. This is when I got to stand before God and say, what did you do? Or did you just take what you had? The easiest thing for me would have done for, for me to do became pastor, just left everything in place and not do anything, not touch anything, and I can just flip the ship, roll on. We'll just all be just, just going along with it. Just whenever I left off, I just pick it up. That's the easiest thing. The hardest thing is to shake things up because there's more meaning to it. I don't want this life to be something I just preach. I want to be something for real. I want to be something I live and I breathe. And I want you to experience that every single day. And it's possible if you fight for it. If you fight for it, you can get it. But I refuse to do anything out of action six because it looks good or make me feel good. And especially if I'm not covering my brothers and sisters for real. Stripping myself, servitude, wrapping your dirt that you have covered. We do that? Now it's not, again, not perfect. But at least we can try. Struggle for it. Trip and fall over it. And we're getting there. We're getting there. I believe it. We, 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 we're there. We, we're getting there. But that's what you want. In any, any way you want. You want love for real. I want a love I can feel. Yes, and you never have to. Or, or you, you, you never have to walk into church backwards. Nobody has to walk into church backwards. You know what I mean by walking to church backwards? Meaning, or leave backwards, you're like this. <laughs> I don't want anybody to have to come into church like this. Like, I want to make sure I keep my eye on you. I got my eye on you. I don't want anybody to do that. I want it to be like I'm at home. Right? I don't want the atmosphere that is completely different when I go home. I'm good. I want the same thing when I come here. Be good. And when I go to work, I want the same kind of thing. I don't want the atmosphere to be different where I have to adjust and become different. I want to be who. This atmosphere must be what I like. I, we set the temperature in here. It's not the companies. It's not the companies. We set the temperature. We want it to be 60 degrees. We can turn it down. If it gets too hot in here, I don't know. This is too hot. I got, we got to turn this temperature down. All right? It's too hot. And you can feel it. Sometimes the, the spirit is thick. I just want people that can tell the truth. That's all. Amen. Tell the truth. Amen. It gets thick in here. Amen. It gets thick and heavy and you feel it. Right? And, and so now the, the, the praise is hard. It's hard. You feel it when you're preaching. You feel it when you're singing. And you feel it in the, word, in the pews. You feel it. And that's not a spirit that God, it's not an a, a atmosphere where God can sit down and rest. I, I want the days of where miracles, somebody come in and blind eyes open. And why, why can't it happen? We don't have to see people roll in. We don't have to see people being rolled in in a wheelchair. We see people, we see our uh, mother Mavis said, no, park it right here. I'll walk. Well, that's what we're trying to establish. That's what I want. That's one of the last things in the, in the hospital. See, I can tell a whole bunch of stories. One of the last things we talked about in the hospital room about being a pastor and about living a life that people can see. Yes. And so all those things are here. Amen. Absolutely. So it does. It's personal. It bothers me. Yes. It's not something I'm just saying. Like, it, it's, it resonates with God me. Hears yes. That, this is my cry. You don't hear it, but I am in my heart. It's, going to happen. it's happening. That's my prayer. It's my cry. Prayer. It's not going out of the church. You know, so when you hear things like this, absolutely. I go home and it bothers my heart. Oh, yeah. Not your Lord. Bothers my heart. Absolutely. And so this is why I fight the way I fight it. And not that I'm trying to be crazy. But I want people delivered. 
right? I want people delivered from anything that they come in here with. I don't want you to come in, in here and leave with more issues. Yes, we have it here. We have that power. Absolutely. Yes, because he could see everything. And, and, I, and I'm saying, why are you afraid of a man? And God saw you. And right. This, as human being. Right. He can only tell you what right. God said. Right. Yeah. Right. And you're scared right. of him coming in the right. door. Right. Right. But then you live in a kind of reckless way. Now, do, do, do you understand? Do you understand that? So they didn't. They because he can see, they didn't do. So now he's not here to see. That means you. Now I can do. Do that make sense? He he can see they were fearful. And when he said it, it went. So they did they lived knowing that if they did it, he will see it. Mm -hmm. So if he's not seeing it now, how are you living? And call them out too. Yes. And there are certain things you would never do. You wouldn't do it because he would see it. But now think about it, now that he's gone. How we live. Who's coming back? <laughs> I, I tell you how we're I'm about to say. He ain't coming back. I tell you, he showed me how we You better go. <laughs> I love him. I love him. I love him. Did you know what I see him was like, like, listen. Pops love you, but you need to go back where you are. I said, he's coming back. Oh. Oh, it's. I think you said he. I said he. I was like, really? I say, I tell you right now, I'm like, Lord, if you send my, I'm going to rebuke him. I want to see my dad, but not here. He can show me my dream, but he, he hey. It's coming back. Okay, it, it is, absolutely. Absolutely. That power that we have, we have it. And you know, part, or everyone that was here, Part to him live in you. Of course. Yes. And that's the standard what I'm talking about. That's the standard. That's what I'm talking about. Let, let's not, let's not, you know, people talk about, oh, you're not keeping up, you know, the standard of the church and things. I'm fighting for it. <laughs> I'm fighting for it, which is why I would say don't wash feet, because I think if he would do it, he would say the same thing. Stop this foolishness. <laughs> Turn the music off. I believe he would do that because he wouldn't care what anybody thought if he disrupts service because he has somebody higher to answer to. You never, you don't, until you, I'm not trying to make it, until you sit in the seat, you don't understand the heat. You don't. It's not something where I'm understanding a little bit. It's restless. Get up. Oh, I want to go to sleep. Can't sleep. Toss, turn. Want to. Force yourself to sleep. Can't. Go to bed four. Wake up at seven. Can't. Because there's too much things in the house of the Lord. Right? There's too much things going on. And you can't take a break. Because that's somebody's life. That's somebody's deliverance. Somebody's happiness. And not that I control it, but for me, I take it personally. I go home with it and say, Lord, why couldn't I do this? Same way the disciples failed. And he went and said, Lord, why couldn't I? And I go home and criticize. I didn't preach enough. Let me get harder. This, this sermon didn't work. Let, let, let me get back to work. And I know I, in my head, see, now, now I'm venting and I'm trusting you with it. Ask my wife, you know, there are moments we're on vacation and my mind is not on vacation, it's at church. It's at church, preparing, because I can't let you down. And they suffer sometimes, because my kids are at the pool and I'm in the room because I have to prepare, because I can't afford to let you down. 
just can't. Because I know he wouldn't do it. It's the truth. But when we get to that place, right? It's not about me. We. I don't want to be lifted and exalted. It's not my goal. I want us. Us to be there. Where you get a peace, you get a peace, you get a peace. Where you don't have to always look to me. You can look to, I got somebody I could trust right there. That's where we need to be as a church. We was there. And people came in, delivered. Set free. All right. Let's go home. Now you finally, this is the way everything that I go through. Absolutely. All right. Let's go home. But it's a good day. Don't, 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 uh, don't be sad. This is not a thing. This is, again, this is something we all strive for. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's pray. Amen. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in our sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my peace and love, everyone. Amen.